Today we're going to talk about the ability of taking NetApp 600, 1TB, 500, 300, and so on gigabit size hard drives, which are, by the way, very cheap to buy on the market, taking them out of their format mode, and changing them down into something that any other server can utilize. Also, you, this will also cover the ability of you being able to take other drives and bring them into the equation, allowing NetApp to reformat those disks for NetApp usage. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, here we have a series of our NetApp chassis arrays. These are the 2.5 inch standard SAS bridge hard drives, which you'll find out on the internet to be really cheap. Um, you can get these for a couple, somewhere between 10 to, let's say, $22. This is a 600 gig drive, if you want to look at it here. And um, they populate really well, but also you want the chassis, this guy right here. Because this chassis, as you can see it here, it actually allows you to connect it to other devices instead of a NetApp device. Now the key detail here is, for instance, I want to connect this guy up to my HP DL385G6 with a SAS controller interface, but since he's got a mini SAS interface and we've got a SAS chassis here, we have to have a specialized chassis uh, interface cable known as a SAS Mini to SAS. Hang on a second, I'll show you one. Now the SAS Mini, which is on one end, and the standard SAS, which is on the other, are actually just two different heads, but using the same protocol that is known as SAS communication. That is a drive communication protocol that's out there. You can also go SAS to SAS if you have a RAID controller that can handle that capacity or a HBA-based controller card. Now, an HBA or a RAID controller card can be a very large base size card, and it has basically your SAS outputs, or in this case, mini SAS outputs, such as this particular PERC card, or, in the, or actually, in the, correction, on this case, a Series 8 P8 card. Um, the interface here is different than that of the actual... 24 bay SAS head and that guy is on this end he'll connect up correctly to that and it allows you to be able to make the interface between the NetApp uh, 4226 series platforms or any alternate variant that is a SAS or a mini SAS head not fiber channel cannot you cannot mix a fiber channel on this platform this way but the rest you can um, this allows you to get access to these discs now, I'll put in this link a reference to another YouTuber who did a really good job of explaining how you can format the disks out of their current NetApp formatting and put them into a traditional 512 sector interleaf formatting that's out there. And as you can see, cards like this allow you to do that. Now, this one is a P8 series, but I took the batteries off of it. And as you can see here, there are the... Uh, coupler sets right there for the internal side but it's for an HP series server this will do just fine no issues whatsoever when you have this connected up to the unit and it posts you will see the disks but you can't use them the reason why you can't use them is because NetApp the fast 3270 this guy right here you see he'll format these cards or these hard drives into a non-conformed format for its requirements now the other important detail to remember is that this is a 4x4 four four set chassis. So in other words, you've got four channels in here. And that's critical because when you divide it by four, you've got six disks. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's sitting on its own channel. Another six. Another channel. Another six. Another channel. And so on. So why is that important? Well, if you buy yourselves a whole bunch of hard drives let's say all SAS drives, but some are 15s and some are 10s, and some are, dis are different sizes, then you have to pay attention to that detail. The recommendation is that the first six need to be the same size and the same speed and classification. Now, if you have SATA drives at 7200 RPM, I do recommend, unlike SAS, to put it in a separate chassis because these channels will come into the minibus of the SAS protocol pathway and the fastest ship is going to rule 
So if you've got 15,000, 15,000, 10,000, 10,000, then down here you've got 72,000, I'm sorry, 7,200 RPM. The 15,000 RPM, the 10,000 RPM will work very well, but they're separated by size and speed. So the first two channels is on 15,000 RPM SAS, let's say they're one terabyte drives. And then the next two channels in busing would be the 10,000 RPM SAS. When I when that's scaled that way, um, because of the nature of, of SAS and its back end, uh, you can flip that forward and back the next part of this is okay I got a whole bunch of 7200 rpms I don't recommend anything slower than 7200 rpms for a SAS bus because the SAS bus can do SATA and SAS but because again with the nature of how this bus communicates it's basically driven on the priority of the SCSI communication busing from back end to front end so <clears throat> like I was saying that if let's say for instance you got an empty chassis here and in this case this one's empty it can take SAS or SATA and you get that guy mounted and you've got let's say one terabyte drive two channels 7200 rpms and you know 500 gig rpm uh, 572 rpms over here on this side so what happens is in the busing process if you only bus this chassis in directly to a server, then it's all high performance from here to here on the back end to the front end channel back to the server. If you daisy chain the array from this guy over to here to here to here and a backup pathway back, so you have basically 48 disks here, you still only have four channels. Now, your channel pathways can alternate from back end to front end, uh, which does allow you to see decent speed, but not the same as if you had this guy all by itself pathed into a, an HBA controller or a RAID controller, and then this one pathed into a separate one. There, you will see the maximum performance between these disks and these disks. Now, the last question that comes up, I'll ask here and explain to you in just a second. Okay, the last part of this is, hey, I really want to cheat. This is all low-income stuff. You buy yourself a chassis for 50, 60 bucks, maybe two of them. They can house the discs that you want to house. And you can do everything you want, and you got some extras, and you want to play around. So what you do is you want to put an SSD into a slot. But the good news is, if this was NetApp, you could not do this. But... If this was a host a, a HS a, a host bus adapter card or a RAID SAS card, you can do this because they can view and interact with these hard drives. But the key detail here is how can you take what you got because you know we're not made of money, right? Put them together and intelligently put them in to the system. <clears throat> well, like we discussed, it is all driven on the principle of the bus, the data bus. That would be that SAS cable I showed you. And how that cable will interact with these chassis. The FAST3270 storage array, which is a very, very good NAS storage array, IP based, it basically do, does what's called dual pathing on the four channel bus. So you start in here, you travel through, and you go down here, and you have an end terminator those go here and then a second controller goes the opposite direction and then goes up to this and now I have basically dual pathways for channel. That's nice, but that's not a server. That's a NetApp 3270. You can do it with something like an HP or an IBM or a Dell platform chassis such as the, you know a DX. Actually, the DX720 is excellent for this. It has all the types of space you want, very powerful board, has a lot of hard disks already on board, but to be able to throw in another 48 disks is just perfect. Now the last question you're probably asking is, why don't I have my NetApp up and running right now? And the answer is pretty simple. I can't be in this room when that thing's turned on. It's so loud and it's so powerful that when you hear it, you just can't 
speak or talk out loud or do anything of any real value. But that's it for now. I'll let you guys go. You have a great week. Thanks.